With the current environment limiting the amount of face-to-face -face selling, B2B companies need to find innovative ways to engage clients. Too often, attention is only paid to the act of buying or filling the cart, where in reality, companies need to engage clients with clients throughout the entire buying journey and beyond. Bill Dunn, president of Dunn Solutions Group, is here today to discuss how the right combination of technology can enable the full buying cycle, not just commerce, enabling companies to digitally interact with customers and drive increased revenue and loyalty in new ways. Thank you so much for joining us today, Bill. Uh, thank you very much. So. Uh... Hello, everybody. Uh, again, my name is uh, Bill Dunn. I'm the president of Dunn Solutions Group, and uh, today's discussion is going to be about your considerations for extending the customer experience beyond just the shopping cart. Um, first, just a little bit about Dunn Solutions Group. Uh, Dunn Solutions Group is a digital commerce and business transformation consultancy, and we help our customers uh, achieve velocity. And when we say velocity, uh, it's more than just speed. We look at velocity as a combination of speed and direction, speed from automating business processes and direction by using analytics. And if you have both speed and direction, then you get uh, velocity. So enough of the commercial. Let's get on with the rest of the, of the discussion. Uh, at the top of the of the of the of the of, of this concept, what we believe in is a virtuous cycle of customer engagement, and that's where you can leverage um, three key aspects to really get to your customers. One, a digital commerce platform, and we'll be talking primarily about that today. But also, that digital commerce platform creates a lot of data, and so we believe that analytics is a key part of analyzing that data and understanding how to get back to your customer. Finally taking that analytics, segmenting your customers, giving them the right messaging, and sending them information that helps them in the buying process through marketing automation that hopefully gets them back to the digital commerce platform. And so if you have all three of these aspects, you really can uh, create a virtuous cycle of customer engagement. And as I said today, we'll be focusing primarily on the digital experience platform. So let's talk a little bit about B2B commerce. It is growing and continues to grow, and you'll hear this throughout uh, you know, all the sessions, I'm sure, but uh, B2B commerce is actually significantly larger than B2C commerce, although most people don't realize that. And uh, the trends are just continuing to, uh, to support this. So over the next few years, we're gonna see um, B2B commerce uh, really eclipse B2C commerce by a significant amount. And so if you're not, doing B2B commerce, or even if you are doing it, you need to really make this an important part of the channel. So how does B2B commerce differ from B2C commerce? And I think a lot of times uh, when people are working in their B2B commerce sites and they're setting them up, they're really thinking of purely automating a process that they have now that's manual, right? So they're thinking, if I can just take this online, uh, reduce expense, um, that's all I really need to do. My B2B customers, they don't need any frills. But I think that uh, you may be missing uh, the reality, which is that the B2B customer is actually looking for an experience that mirrors what they have been experiencing in B2C, but in the B2B environment. So um, they're not just looking for a generic, you know, uh, green bar type experience. They have gone home, they've purchased from Amazon, they've purchased from other retail areas, and they want to experience that same sort of experience when they're doing their B2B buying. And one of the things that we've seen as challenges in B2B organizations is typically in the past, they've relied primarily on direct salespeople and direct sales connections, which is a, an in-person type of a high, very high touch um, experience. And as they move over to e-commerce, they um, are losing some of that high touch that they've had in that personal experience. So what we say is that, you know, B2B e-commerce is not a replacement uh, for your sales team. It's actually another way that you can enhance the power of your sales team and uh, create an additional channel for your customers to interact with you and work in concert with your sales team. But we need to think about some things when we're doing our B2B e-commerce implementation. So um, we, uh, we want to ask the question, does customer experience matter when we're talking about a B, B2B? And recent surveys say that customer experience really does matter quite a bit. Again, I think the feeling is a lot of times that price is the only thing that matters in a B2B 
e-commerce um, you know environment. But the truth is that a large percentage of customers say that the experience they have as they're going through that buying cycle is as important as the products and services that they get. And they're setting their expectations much higher. Again, focusing on experience as well as um, you know the actual purchasing part of the process. So uh, many times I think B2B customers feel their online experience falls way short, and especially way short of the experience they may have had with that high-touch salesperson interaction. So what can we do as we move through this cycle and decide to increase more of our sales online? So what I've seen when talking to customers, especially as they get into this for the first time, is they have a high degree of focus on the operational aspect of B2B commerce. They're focusing on the shopping experience. So they're thinking about the catalog and the card and all the different kinds of parameters that you need to have effective B2B commerce. So it's not the same as uh, B2C. There's things you do in B2B that you don't do in B2C, like you have customer-specific pricing. You have a, a quoting workflow. You know, you, you may have a back and forth and negotiation interaction. You might have tiered pricing. Um, quite frankly, you also might have a lot more back end integration as there's a lot of different rules and different ways that your B2B customers want to interact with you than your B2C customers might want to uh, do so. So a lot of focus up front is often spent on this catalog and cart part of the B2B e-commerce process, which I don't think is wrong, but I think we need to look a little bit beyond just the catalog and cart. And so that comes to what can we do to engage the customer across this entire buying cycle. So if we look at a typical journey, we have an attract phase, an engage and convert phase, and then finally a retain phase where we try to make the customer feel like they made the right choice. And so thinking about the cart really only helps us in the engage and convert phase. So um, let's think about what can we do in the other phases. Well, the big thing that uh, we see is personalization. And when you think about personalization, it's getting messages and getting help in the buying process. So when people come to our uh, website, it's not really just about pushing product and helping, you know, getting them to buy more, which of course is what we'd like, but what we really need to do is we want to help that customer in the buyer's journey, right? So we want to assist them in making their choices and helping them move along in this journey. And in order to do that, we need to personalize that experience uh, beyond just showing them a catalog, right? And in surveys after surveys, uh, people have shown that they are interested in that personalized experience. When they come to a site, they want to see information about the things that they're interested in purchasing, and they want to understand that we're helping them in their journey. We can suggest things to them that make sense to them. So if they're coming to our site looking for widgets, we shouldn't be trying to send them ads about sprockets. We should be understanding what they've bought in the past, what kind of messaging they're interested in, and personalizing all those messages. Um, so that's a key aspect about making this a more um, a fluid process and, and really giving the shopper what they need. The other thing that we've seen a lot is that typically uh, the B2B sites tend to focus on uh, the shopping and the card experience. But if you look initially up front in the attract stage, um, there's an opportunity to give information and help that B2B buyer make the right decision. And so we have uh, customers that have their, their main site, but then they've created sort of these micro sites, which are not really shopping experiences, but more informational experiences that really explain the benefits of the solution and why you'd want to partner with, um, your, with this company to, uh, to buy the things that you need. What's interesting about the microsite concept, which is more about content and personalization than it is about you know clicking and adding to cart, is that in the B2B uh, life cycle, typically decisions are made about purchases as a group. So it's typically you know many people that are involved in that purchase. And so how do you make it easy for those people to share information about your product or service and then build consensus, eventually resulting in a purchase? And so that's all in this attract stage. And the ability to build microsites quickly and quickly create these types of shareable pieces of information 
helps us in that buying cycle up front before they even make the decision to come to your cart. And so these microsites, you know, not only can they be in, integrated into an online process, right, where you can have emails and other things sort of taking people to microsites, but a lot of our customers are using these microsites as sales tools in, for in-person sales to help augment the salesperson when they're there on site. So those are some ways that you can kind of start thinking about adding more personalization, adding more content to that attract stage of the site. Well, to do that, you need more than just catalog and cart, right? You need to have a fully engaged content management system that's part of the solution because that content management system is going to be able to deliver content throughout the entire process, through the entire workflow from attract all the way to retain. And so that CMS can be used for community discussions, blogs, white papers, videos, landing pages, microsites. That becomes part of creating that overall experience that somebody has when they're buying from your organization. So catalog and cart, CMS, very important that you have both of those kind of capabilities within your B2B experience. So what happens to the next stage? That post-purchase experience. So in order to uh, keep customers loyal, you also want to have a digital way to help them after the purchase. And post-sale customer service is part of that journey as well. So um, so a seller, you shouldn't think about post-sale um, service as you know an extra expense. It's actually another way to engage with customers. And as you engage with customers and help them to be successful in leveraging your product, you're building up brand loyalty. And again, you're making it an easier decision for them to stay with your organization. In fact, what you're doing is creating sort of a moat around, um, around them leaving because um, customers that have a high uh, value of the service that they get are less likely to transfer to another vendor for a small change in price. And so if you're not giving that full level of service and experience to the customer, you are very susceptible to changing and churning based on price. So by adding extra things in post-sale support, post-sale, uh, post, uh, post, uh, you are creating this mode. And what you are doing is also creating a differentiated customer experience. So how do you do that electronically? Um, you create you know, discussion boards and forums. You have ways for customers to log in and get user manuals to get material safety data sheets, um, the specifications, all electronically without having to uh, bother your internal staff every time somebody uh, lost a user manual or needs a parts guide or those types of things. You make those things part of the journey. And in fact, what we've done a lot is we've integrated that type of content actually in the catalog and outside of the catalog so that a customer uh, may come back to the catalog just to get a spec sheet or a PDF or something associated with the product and then you're bringing them back into the experience. So every time you're creating a mechanism for them to come back and interact with you, you're creating another opportunity to build brand loyalty, another opportunity for them to potentially discover something else about you and your products and your company that can help them as they do their business. So as we think about those things, um, we need uh, a way also to allow them to interact with some of our back systems. Maybe they want to you know, uh, figure out what's going on with the service call. Maybe they want to understand shipping. Maybe they want to have other elements, look at maybe their order history, all of those types of things. Well, for all those types of things, you need to be able to provide that electronically. And the best best sites do that as part of the overall experience. So you create multiple channels for the customer to interact with you, not just a single channel. So in order to have that type of capability, um, you need another kind of piece of software, uh, which is sort of this customer or vendor portal. Uh, I say vendor because your vendors can also share that portal as well. And so when you have a customer or vendor portal, um, you can create these communities and forums. You can have, you have document management where you can share documents with your customers. You have opportunities for them to interact with your post-sale support teams. And so, again, if you create all this and put it available digitally, you are serving your customer across that entire life cycle of 
attract, engage, convert, and retain. So let's go through these items again. Catalog and cart. The core, I mean, obviously, if you can't sell anything, um, you can't, uh, you're not going to make any revenue. So that is uh, the core. But in addition, to really create a personalized experience, you need the CMS component. And then finally, um, across the whole life cycle, but more so at the end, um, you need some sort of a customer portal. So having all three of these kinds of capabilities um, gives you the ability to create that overall customer experience that we're looking for. So what we're suggesting is that instead of buying all these products separately and trying to uh, integrate them together and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and take a lot of time and energy in, in, in trying to make that happen, instead we suggest that you maybe should look at a digital experience platform. So what a digital experience platform is a unified platform uh, that typically is already pre-integrated, already has all of these components that you need, and you can get that from one vendor. And because it comes from one vendor, they've already done a lot of the back office things to make this work together. So the content management solution, it can plug into the e-commerce solution, and it can push content to your cart or to your product display pages or to your category pages or your home pages. Plus, that same CMS can be used for microsites or it can be used for your website or it can be used for other elements of interaction, um, maybe even pushing content to a mobile device. And finally, you have this concept of a portal where not only can you interact with the cart, uh, but you also can create a digital experience which allows your customers to interact with other systems behind the scenes. You know, systems, you never want your customer to log into your ERP, but maybe you do want your customer to log in and see where their order status is within your ERP, right? So there's a lot of times that you want to share information within some of your back-end systems, but that information, you don't want to give your customer access to that system. And that's where that, that vendor portal and customer portal come into play. So if you have all three of those elements within one solution, then you have your, your digital experience platform. And so what types of things should a digital experience platform have? What are certain th elements that you're looking for as you go shopping for your DXP? And, you know, here what we've done is we've kind of shown all elements of the entire customer journey from attract all the way to engage, convert, and retain and grow. And then you can see little elements along the way. So the ability to create microsites and marketing pages, the ability to engage with product pages, uh, the ability, of course, for a shopping cart checkout, that's just you know, point of entry, but also be able to interact with back-end systems, um, you know, and, and be able to, so all of these elements are part of that complete digital customer journey, and you should be thinking about creating that complete journey, not just the shopping cart. So which products are out there? There's many DXPs out there. We are a fan of LifeRay. We're a LifeRay partner. Uh, LifeRay has been around uh, for many years. It's an open source DXP platform, and it's uh, they like to say they're B2B first. Um, so it's built completely ground up um, for the needs of a B2B seller. So it's open source, it's customizable, has built-in content management, and it's a true portal. I'm not going to read all the bullet points, but it's a great solution. One of the nice things about LifeRay, too, is from a a pricing perspective, it's very uh, it's very reasonably priced, and it's completely upgradable and extensible. So it fits in within any of the existing technologies that you may already have within your organization, and so it, it you know it's very easy to tie it into your backend ERPs or your other types of solutions that you might already have, and create this unified uh, process. And we have a lot of experience in implementing LifeRay in a lot of different environments, and we'd be happy to uh, to talk to you and demo that product in more detail, um, you know, if you want to follow up after the show. So as we're coming to the end of the discussion, I wanted to kind of review some of the uh, key takeaways uh, in around this B2B journey. Um, I think it's important to remember that B2B customers um, value the entire buying experience. Um, all the way from attract to retain, not just the shopping experience. And so uh, as you're thinking about your own environment, if you're not providing that complete experience from beginning to end, 
you're probably missing a component that's important in order to attract and retain your customers. And so in giving somebody that experience, you should be looking for a DXP platform with all the features that can help you do that, B2B commerce, content management, portal, because a pre-integrated solution like that can give you the best experience. Now, if you already have an e-commerce platform that you've used, but you're missing some of the other components, there's still hope. Uh, you can always add on the other components and have it work side by side with your commerce experience. So it's not a requirement that everything come from one vendor, but if you are starting from Greenfield, it's usually a good idea to take a look and see if that uh, makes a lot more sense. Finally, I do want to say that we're in a very um, uh, interesting situation uh, this year and especially uh, the rest of the year and, and, and this summer. And I think a lot of people have sort of shut down and decided they're going to sort of wait. Um, I would say that this is an opportune time to do just the opposite. Um, when every, while everyone's waiting, this is a time for you to move ahead. And if you have the uh, foresight and the opportunity to move ahead now and work on that and extending that customer experience and creating this um, new way of doing business right now, you're going to be in a fantastic position to take advantage of when the market comes back. Um, so, you know, uh, I think uh, being meek and holding back at this point, especially on this type of initiative where really at the end of the day, this is driving sales. Uh, this is a place where you really should invest because this is the time to do that. If you can do that now, you're going to reap tremendous rewards, you know, as we move forward in, uh, in 2021. So um, uh, that is the end of uh, my talk today. I appreciate you spending time uh, and learning a little bit about uh, the whole life cycle, and uh, I will turn it back. Well, thank you so much for that very helpful presentation, Bill. I think we can all agree it's imperative now to start thinking about the complete B2B experience. Stay tuned, folks, for our next session, which will be focusing on maintaining the catalog to help customers make informed purchasing decisions in a, a virtual environment.